Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I am back to do another weekly reads video. Um, this one will probably be shorter than the ones that have been going up recently just because I haven't read as many books this week. Um, and I even like debated about doing this video this week because I was like, well, I only have two books really to talk about or maybe two and a half, but I figured I might as well just do it anyways because one, I have the time. And two, knowing my luck, next week I'll read like four books and then I'll be like, oh god, I have six books I need to talk about in a single video and it'll be way too much. So just to keep it easier on myself, really, is honestly that's the only thing. Um, Just to keep it easier on myself, I'll just do another weekly wrap up. Also, why am I wearing a baseball cap? I don't know. We're at this point of quarantining, I think. So first up, I have Dragonfish by Wu Tran. Uh, this is a book that I sort of had on my radar for a while. And another story of I was at a used bookstore and I saw a copy of this and I picked it up because I knew some things about it. Like I'd heard relatively good things about this and I'm always looking for mystery books written by not white people because it's significantly harder to find than you would think. So yes, I found it and then it like sat on my shelves for like a year. And you know, since I'm running out of books to read, I finally read this one. <laughs> So this book is interesting because it's mainly told from the point of view of a middle-aged white guy. Um, so the main point of view is this character Robert who had gotten married to this Vietnamese woman who he like renames to Susie or like suggests to her that she goes by the name of Susie because I don't know white people um, and <laughs> This is how this wrap up is going. So anyways, yes, they were married for like four or five years and then he gets physically abusive with her and she leaves. And then like after she leaves, she ends up moving away. Robert doesn't really know where. He eventually finds out that she has moved to Las Vegas, is with someone else now, but she's in another like physically abusive relationship. But this one is like significantly more abusive. Like if we're talking relative terms, like he may have hit her one time, but this guy like threw her down a flight of stairs, that sort of thing. So yeah, he finds out about this and ends up driving to Las Vegas and puts himself in the middle of what is happening there. And then months later, Susie goes missing and her current husband basically hires Robert because Robert is a police officer to figure out where she is. So I gave this book a three out of five stars. So I'll start off with that. I like this book in certain aspects and I couldn't handle this book in certain aspects. So I will say that this book is like really compelling, like the plot line is super compelling and so I immediately fell into the story and wanted to know what exactly was going on here. There's also a lot of things that are hinted at in this book. Susie has some sort of like mental health issue, whether it be like depression or high anxiety or something along those lines. She like wakes up in the middle of the night and like wanders off and things along those lines. And so that's part of the story here. Susie was also a refugee from, from Vietnam. You were also like finding out a lot about that circumstance as well. So this book is really interesting because it's like a noir style book in general, but it weaves in this story about like immigration and refugees and being a Vietnamese specifically refugees and what that experience was like for a lot of people and that was like super fascinating and also like Susie as a character is very interesting because so much of her is kept a secret from Robert and so you're reading this book or at least I was reading this book being like what is the truth like what happened in her past what is actually going on and like things slowly get revealed over the course of this book and I thought all of that was really, really fascinating. Um, the stuff that I didn't really enjoy is basically the way that the women are talked about and treated in here. This is one of those situations where I was reading this book being like, hmm, this character is misogynistic, but I don't know if they're misogynistic on purpose, like if the writer is saying something by creating this misogynistic character, or if he's just, you know, misogynistic. Yeah, that's sort of something I have an issue with. Like, obviously the fact that the main character gives his wife a new name and like refuses to refer to her by her actual name at any point in this book. There's a lot of times when he's interacting with other characters who are also Vietnamese and he like talks about how he feels so uncomfortable because he's an outsider in this situation and he'll never really understand what it's like for them or like be in the circle that they're talking about and sometimes they'll like even speak Vietnamese to each other and he obviously doesn't know what they're saying and he like comments on that and I'm like yeah buddy welcome 
come to the club, I guess. Like, you don't have a right to be a part of that uh, circle, however you want to say it. But <laughs> again, I think that was done on purpose because, you know, Vu Tran is a Vietnamese author um, or of Vietnamese descent. When I was thinking about it, like this book was published back in 2015. And back in 2015, again, it was significantly harder to even find books written by authors of color, let alone like mysteries and stuff like that written by authors of color. So part of me wonders like if Vu Tran wrote this book from the point of view of like a straight white male American to sort of provide uh, almost like relatable character for like mainstream America sort of thing. And if so, I think it was that's brilliant because I, he introduces so many thoughts and ideas in this book that maybe other pe people weren't really exposed to very much when this book was originally put out. So yeah, if this was done on purpose, it was brilliant. But if it wasn't done on purpose, <laughs> then I don't know how I feel. So I think that's part of the reason why I gave it a three out of five stars. Like it's hard to tell what was intentional and what wasn't intentional. But as a general like mystery noir book, I think this is super compelling. Like this is the perfect sort of beach read, vacation read, not that anyone's going to beaches or on vacations, but you know what I mean. Um, if you're in the mood for something along those lines, I definitely recommend this book. And then the other book I finished this week was Humiliation, which is a collection of short stories by Paulina Flores, and this was translated from Spanish by Megan McDowell. So this is a collection of short stories, and if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you probably will have noticed that I don't really talk about short story collections very often, and that's because I don't read them very often. <laughs> Shocking, I know. And so I posted about this on my Instagram, and a lot of people commented, or by a lot, I mean like two uh, people commented asking, like, kind of why I don't really read very many short story collections and things like that, and you know, kind of the follow up question is, like, why did I finish this one? So there are a couple of reasons why I don't read a lot of short story collections, but a lot of it comes down to the fact that like one, I think it's hard to market short story collections in a way that's compelling because all of the stories are different. So it's not like there's a compelling character or a compelling plot or anything along those lines that you can really hook a reader with or at least hook me with. I just hear like about short story collections in general and then I'm just like oh cool another collection of short stories like why should I bother with that when there's this other book that I want to read that sounds really fascinating. So that's part of it. The other part of it is like short story collections for me are just really hard to get into and stick with. There have been lots of times where I've gotten short story collections whether it be from publishers or just I bought them myself or whatever and I'll read like the first story, maybe two, and then I'll just stop and I don't feel compelled to keep going. All right, with that giant preamble over with now, I can talk about what I really enjoyed in this book. So this is a collection of contemporary short stories and they all take place in Chile. They all follow characters who are kind of in like the lower classes in this country. And the stories in here are just really, really beautiful. And I feel like Paulina Flores explores this really like interesting intersection of people who are either down on their luck or come from a low place and are trying to create better circumstances for themselves or people who are like from a lower class and try to do more with their life and then didn't. And that melancholy feeling really permeates through this entire collection. You could say, you know, humiliation also permeates through this entire collection, which I think is also true. There is that theme throughout most, if not all, of these stories. But I think humiliation is like a really strong term for the feeling that's uh, expressed through these stories. But I definitely think like humiliation is a part of it. Another thing that I really loved about these stories is that they were kind of like the perfect length for the most part. When a short story gets too short or too long, then it like loses me. And it's funny because if it's too short, I feel like I don't really commit to the story. And if it's too long, I feel like it gets inflated with unnecessary things. So for me like the perfect length for a short story is like 10 to 15 pages. Like I think there are eight or nine short stories in this whole collection and the collection itself is like 250 pages. So yeah I think like that 10 to 20 page mark is the perfect amount for me because it gets you invested with the characters and what's going on in that specific short story. But again it doesn't become too 
full of itself almost. And it's funny saying that because like the last short story in this collection is almost like novella length, like it's over 50 pages, I think. And that was like my least favorite read in this entire collection because I just felt like it was meandering and didn't really do much with the length that it was given. And I think the best short stories sort of like embrace the constraints of short story and really like excel at telling you a story in that short period of time. So I mean I'm not going to go through like all of the stories in here obviously but like there are some really beautiful stories. Like the first one is told from the point of view of this like little girl who's probably like around 10 years old and her father has lost his job and she like convinces him to go to this like audition to be either an actor or a model something along those lines like that sort of agency um, and she like spends the story talking about how like great her father is and how beautiful he is and how he's like the most handsome person that she's ever seen and sort of like the what happens when he goes see the audition is like so beautiful and so heartbreaking and like everything that happens afterwards is just Ah, oh, so well done. There's another story in here where you're following this little boy who he and his friends decided they're gonna steal some musical instruments so that way they can start a band and then like basically other things happen. <laughs> It's hard to talk about short story collections without like completely getting into spoilers of this story. And then there's like another story that's really simple and but beautiful about this girl who like moves back home after I believe a significant breakup. There's another story of a character looking back on his life and what he considers like the turning point summer of his like childhood and things like that. And yeah, it's it's just so so beautiful and so well done. Obviously props also to Megan McDowell for creating this beautiful translation but I highly recommend picking this up. It came out last fall but I'm really glad that I finally got around to reading it because it was really fantastic. So those are the two books that I finished so far this week. Um, I thought I would mention really quickly that I also read half of Deacon King Kong which is by uh, James McBride. This is James McBride's latest book and this is a book that I have a hard time with. Not a hard time with. I'm going to have a hard time talking about, I should say. I read 50% of it and then I gave it back to the library. I had it as an ebook from the library. I think that it is a good book, but it's just not the right book for me, at least right now. So there's a chance I might like pick it up again in the future, but it just wasn't working for me. And that's actually what took up the majority of my reading this week, which is part of the reason why I don't have a whole lot more to talk about. I also didn't listen to an audiobook this week. But yeah, I read like 50% of it and then I realized I wasn't really compelled to keep reading it. And I've looked at some reviews on Goodreads and some people are like, yeah, the first half didn't really get me but the second half was great and I'm just like oh, I hate when books are like that because I feel forced to keep reading the book that I'm not really enjoying that much and so I decided to just put it down and so I yeah I, I have a feeling I'll come back to it again in the future but I just think also like the way my brain is working right now I can't really handle that book um it's a historical fiction book set in the 1960s and it has like multiple perspectives and so like each chapter is following a different character who are all kind of around this single scene. There were parts of it that I found like really great. Um, James McBride is a fantastic writer like on a sentence by sentence level and he like really paints a scene like the book is written in a way where the entire time I was reading it I was like man this needs to be a movie because it's so cinematic almost and so like visual like he really paints a picture and you know like where you are and who these characters are and things like that but I think like right now I need something with a more like singular point of view that really like immerses me in the story. So yeah, that is everything that I have to talk about this week. In terms of what I'm currently reading, I'm kind of like, again, just figuring out what my brain wants to read. I did pick up How to Write an Autobiography. I think that's what it's called by Alexander Chi. Um, I read the first essay in that and it was really good. But again, I just don't think essays are going to be what my brain goes towards, but maybe it will. But I really just want like a really immersive novel right now. So I'm going to like you know, pick through the pile that I have and figure out if any of them will click with my brain. So yeah, uh, let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of the books I talked about here today um, and what your thoughts were on them. Or if you have any questions, you're always welcome to leave that down below or let me know what you've been reading lately. So yeah, that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.